my name is Tom Mooney from Amphenol Charles Industries. Today we'll be going over the installation instructions for the Fiber Optic Dome Closure A or FODCA. Gather the following equipment to perform the FODC installation. To begin installation, open the clamp at the base of the dome. Remove the clamp. Slide the dome off of the FODC assembly and set the clamp and dome aside for later use. The splice trays are attached to a pair of tiny brackets on the FODC. The tray tabs on each side fit into the keyholes on the tray bracket. To pivot the tray, ensure that the tabs are in the pivot position that would be the upper round section of the keyhole. If the tray is in the lock position and the user attempts to pivot the tray without repositioning the tabs, the tabs will break. Always reposition the tabs before pivoting the tray. Locate the oval express port on the base of the FODC. Use a 5 mm or 3 16 Allen wrench to remove the screws securing the express port to the base. Remove the sealing components. The plastic inner and outer gaskets are shipped inside the express port. The rubber middle gasket ships in the tools and accessories kit. At this time, select the appropriately sized middle gasket from the parts bag. For small cable, use the 8 to 14 millimeter grommet. For large cables, use the 14 to 17.5 millimeter grommet. The grommet and gasket assembly are positioned in the order for proper assembly. Locate and remove the cable clamp just above the FODC base. Two strength member clamps are located above the attachment plate. If using a 96 or lower count fiber cable, insert an eight foot length. If using a 144 fiber cable, insert a six foot length. Route the loop through the oval port to the transport tray. Separate the buffer tubes that will be routed to the splice trays. Loop the buffer tubes inside the transport tray. Use cable ties to manage as needed. A set screw in the top of the strength member bracket applies pressure to the strength member to hold it in place. Insert the strength member into the hole in the bracket. Tighten the screw to hold the strength member in place. Replace the attachment plate, securing it with the screws previously removed. Insert feed cable as described in the previous scenes. Install a bond clamp, usually customer supplied. For example, a 3M Scotch Lock Shield Bond connector. Attach one end of the ground wire to the bond clamp. Attach the other end of the ground wire to one of the metal strength member posts and tighten the screw. Repeat this procedure on the second cable loop opening as well as for any armored branch cables. Following the deployment of the splice case, attach a ground strap or wire to the external bonding screw. The FODCA includes four splice trays, each with 18 slots to hold splice sleeves. Each tray can accommodate 18 splices single stacked or 36 splices double stacked in total. Splice capacity is 144 single fusion splices. Reinstall the four splice trays into the tray bracket if they have been removed previously by inserting the tray tabs into the keyholes on the bracket. Remove the tray cover and set it aside. Place the assigned buffer tube into the tray 
marking the points on each side where the buffer tube enters the tray. Remove the buffer tube sheathing between the two marks and route the loose fibers into the tray. Use felt and cable ties to secure the buffer tube at both entry points on the tray. Determine which branch cable ports will be used for cable and which will not be used in this installation. Locate the branch cable ports on the bottom of the closure. Open the ports by removing the compression screw using the wrench included in the tools and parts bag. Follow this step for all branch cable ports that will not be used. Ports that are not being used must be plugged to seal the unit. The FODC tool bag includes plugs for any unused branch cable ports. Insert a plug through the hole in the branch port grommet and slide the grommet back into the branch port. Please note that some brackets have integrated metal end rings and some have separate metal end rings. Be sure to place the metal rings on either side of the grommet in the branch port when installing. Locate a branch cable grommet from the tool bag that is the proper size for the cable to be installed into that port. The holes in the grommet are sealed with a thin membrane. Use a narrow pointed object to pierce this membrane. Route the cable through the branch port screw and then through the hole in the grommet. Determine the length of branch cable needed for routing into the splice tray. Unsheath this section. Route the unsheathed branch fiber through the branch cable port into the FODC. The FODC base has attachment plates and strength member brackets on the sides similar to those shown for feed cable installation. Use the set screws and the strength member brackets to secure the branch cable. Tighten the branch port screw. Use the included wrench and tighten as much as will easily tighten. Note that some grommets have multiple openings for multiple cables depending on the cable size. The user need not use all the holes to seal the unit. By tightening the port screw completely, the grommet will compress and seal the cable, even if only one cable has been installed. Route the branch fibers into the splice tray and secure the buffer tubes to the tray. Perform splicing operations inside the tray. When all splicing operations have been completed, replace the tray covers. Use the Velcro included with the FODC to secure the splicing trays into the transport bracket. Replace and tighten the clamp around the FODC base and dome. There are multiple mounting options available. This concludes the installation instructions for the fiber optic dome enclosure or FODC. Should you have additional questions, please call the Charles Technical Support Team at 847-806-8500.